Direct democracy is a system of popular self-government which is characterised by the following features. Direct involvement of the people in political decision-making, an absence of professional politicians, and active and continuous engagement and consultation of the people. Its proponents believe that direct democracy heightens control as people are encouraged to make decisions for themselves rather than relying on a political representative such as an MP, MSP or state senator, for example. If we consider democracy to be government of the people, by the people and for the people, then direct democracy supporters would say that this form of democracy is the most superior form of the concept. Athenian democracy developed around the 6th century BC in the Greek city-state of Athens. A system known as demokratia, or rule by the people, from demos meaning the people and kratos meaning power. It was the first known democracy in the world, and the form that was used was direct democracy. Under this system, all male citizens had equal political rights, freedom of speech, and the opportunity to participate directly in politics. Any citizen could speak directly at the assembly and vote on decisions by simply raising their hand. The majority won and the decision was final. Nine presidents were elected and held the office once only. These men organised the proceedings and assessed the voting results. This system appeared to work reasonably well, however the context of ancient Athens was quite unique. Only male citizens over the age of 18 could speak and vote in the assembly, therefore women, slaves and resident foreigners were excluded from the political process. Eligible citizens probably accounted for between 10 and 20% of the population, which was around 250,000 people, and of these, it is believed that only around 3,000 actively engaged in the political process. Of this number, it is thought that perhaps as few as 100 citizens, the wealthiest and most influential, dominated the political arena. This is a unique example that demonstrates the possibility of direct democracy as a political structure, but also highlights that the exclusive nature of citizenship in ancient Athens and its relatively small population made this system possible. Today, direct democracy can be seen in action in the Swiss cantons. There are 26 cantons of Switzerland. These are states of the Swiss Confederation. Switzerland has a population of 8.2 million people spread across these 26 cantons. The largest canton of Switzerland is Zurich. Each canton has its own constitution, legislature, executive, police and courts. The cantons have parliaments and are responsible for healthcare, welfare, law enforcement, public education and taxation. Each canton also defines its official language. In the Swiss context, there are three instruments of direct democracy which are all types of referendum, mandatory, popular initiative and optional. Mandatory referendums are compulsory. The popular initiative can be launched by any citizen to demand a change in the constitution. 100,000 signatures are required to be collected within an 18-month period. Optional referendums stipulate that eight cantons must request it, or 50,000 signatures from eligible voters must be collected with 100 days for it to be considered. A double majority, meaning the consent of the majority of the people and the cantons, is required to amend the country's constitution. 200 popular initiatives have been voted on since this form of direct democracy was introduced in 1891. Only 22 have been accepted by the Federal Council and Parliament. In 2016, a popular initiative to give everyone in the country a basic income made it to the referendum stage, but was rejected by 76.9% of voters. Parliament passes new legislation and amendments to existing legislation, but citizens can call for a referendum on new laws and against international treaties. This system relies on significant involvement from the electorate. Swiss citizens report a high level of satisfaction with their political system and government. Nevertheless, Swiss voter turnout in 2015 amounted to just 48.4% of the eligible electorate. Switzerland also uses representative democracy as it allows its citizens to vote in elections for political representatives that sit in the Federal Assembly. The Swiss system is described as a semi-direct democracy as it uses a hybrid approach. One example of the use of direct democracy in the UK is the referendum on the UK's membership of the European Union, commonly referred to as the EU referendum or the Brexit referendum. This took place on the 23rd of June 2016 in the UK and Gibraltar. 
Gibraltar is not part of the UK, but has been controlled by the UK since 1713. Spain lays claim to the island also. People who live in Gibraltar cannot vote in UK general elections. The EU, or European Union, is an economic and political union involving 27 countries. The UK was the 28th. It allows free trade, which means that goods can move between member countries without any checks or extra charges. The EU also allows free movement of people to live and work in whichever country they choose. The UK joined in 1973 and it is the first member state to withdraw. Turnout for the EU referendum was 72.2% with 51.9% voting to leave and 48.1% voting to remain in the EU. Leave won the majority of votes in England and Wales, while every council in Scotland saw remain majorities. 95.9% of citizens living in Gibraltar voted to remain in the EU. Turnout here was 83.5%. The UK formally left the EU on the 31st of January 2020, but there is a transition period in which issues relating to data sharing, security, Licensing and the regulation of medicines need to be clarified and agreed. There were several issues with the Brexit referendum as a form of direct democracy. Some people felt that they had been misled by the Leave campaign group after seeing what became known as the Brexit bus, or battle bus, that claimed that the £350 million that was sent to the EU each week could be spent on the NHS instead in the event of a Leave result. It was later determined by the Office of National Statistics, the ONS, that this figure was wildly overestimated and misleading. The figure also did not take into account the money the UK received from the EU. Nigel Farage, a prominent Brexiteer, later admitted that the message on the battle bus was a mistake. The issue here is that referendums can be manipulated by the groups that are well-funded and can gain extensive media coverage through large-scale campaigns. The associated issue is a distribution of misinformation upon which citizens may make their decisions. A further issue is that membership of the EU is an incredibly complex relationship for all member states. How can we expect the British people or any people to decide on their future in an informed and balanced way? Did people really have all of the information and understand all of the implications of leaving the EU? Although this referendum asked the electorate directly for its view on EU membership, it was called at the will of the government. David Cameron called the referendum, some say, to gain political advantage and relieve political pressure, given that he had made a manifesto commitment in 2015 to undertake a referendum on EU membership. Some argue that referendums with implications of this magnitude should be decided by a supermajority, where a particular threshold of public support would be required to pass a motion. This might be three-fifths or 60%, for example. It has also been argued that a referendum of this nature should have a threshold for turnout to ensure that political decisions are not being taken by a small percentage of the population. Finally, it is worth noting that in UK law, referendums are not legally binding. This is because Parliament is sovereign, and so it alone has the authority to pass a law. The people are not sovereign. Their views in a referendum are advisory only. Some believe that this is important to prevent mob rule or tyranny of the majority, as de Tocqueville coined it. In this video, we have explored the concept of direct democracy and where it has been used historically and currently. Our next video lesson will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this form of democracy and explore the views of political theorists.